Hey there everyone, Hatesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the Flutter installation. And as you can see today, we are on Windows. Yep, we are on Windows. So lovely to see you here, folks, and welcome to the Flutter installation video on Windows. And I would like to really focus a lot in here on the topic of do you understand your operating system? See, a lot of people just shy away or run away from a mobile development, whether it's React Native or Flutter, just because the installation process is difficult for them. It's not difficult, it's just you don't uh, understand or you're not focusing that much on your operating system basic. Operating system is exactly same as Linux, Windows or Mac. Foundation remains the same. They're not the same, they work different, but the foundation of how their environment variables and paths are being set is exactly same. Sometimes when you install a thing, you just expect that it will work out of the box because we are so habitual of installing the things, then finding it out and just double clicking on it and or maybe just double click on the shortcut icon and it works out of the box. That's the forceful invocation of a program or application. That's we are, that's how supposed to be application works. And we are trained to use application like that. But for programs, it's not like that. Let's just say this is the program that you have installed and this is another program that you have installed. And if this program wants to invoke this program, it needs to find its environment variables or paths. If those paths are not properly set, it will never be able to call this and this will never work. This is usually your Android Studio or your emulators and all those tools. Since uh, this path is not set, this will never be able to call it. It can be React Native, it can be Flutter, but since this video is on Flutter, we'll be focusing on Flutter as well. So keeping that in mind, I'll walk you through with a foolproof scenario, no matter when and where you're watching this video, maybe down the line one year, two year, this will still work. You just have to update the numbers. That's all it is. Let me walk you through. All right, so a couple of prerequisites for that. We need to have some of the softwares before we get started with that. And no, these are not optional software. You need to have it. First and foremost is Node.js. No, uh, I understand that Flutter is not based on JavaScript or TypeScript. Why do we need Node? There are some packages which are actually dependent on Node and which sometimes in the future can help you. So for those future perspective, just keep this up here. Whether you install the LTS, the long-term support version or the current uh, cutting edge feature, both are totally okay as long as you have it installed. 18.16, anything above is fine. Anything little bit beyond is also fine. Maybe you have 18.15 or maybe 18.1, that's okay. If you're going with the 20 version, that is also fine. No worries at all. Maybe you have 19, maybe you have 20.3, 20.4, 20.6. It's totally okay. Okay, what's the point of having this? Once you actually have this, then simply go ahead and open up your command prompt and simply look for is it properly installed or not. Node-V is the way to check it. As long as it gives you some number, whichever the version you have installed, that is totally fine. But with this, uh, you also get a free tool. Uh, everybody loves free. So npm-V uh, is the node package manager, which is also very useful. We will be needing that. All right, once you have done this, then simply go ahead and install uh, Java also on your system and you really want JDK. And specifically, there is a version known as JDK 11. Now, how I came upon to that website? Now, there are any, many websites which offers JDK 11. You specifically need JDK 11 as of now. If it updates, I'll probably uh, pin the comments or something like that. But as of now, and especially looking forward for a couple of years, the JDK 11 is the one that you really should have. Now, I know JDK latest versions are available and all of that, but since due to licensing issues and a lot more things, uh, right now, things are stuck with the Open JDK 11, and we probably don't need more than this one. That's totally fine. Uh, feel free to download the JDK, not the JRE, from wherever the resource you like. The problem is people don't really care that how this program is installing things on your system. You should be taking care of that. That's the main reason why it gives you error. I happen to uh, simply stumble upon the website OpenLogic because I found the interface pretty decent and I can just choose the things here. So I am looking forward for version 11 in case it later on goes for 17 or something. Okay, you just have to change the numbers. I told you, <laughs> numbers. I know that I am on Windows this time, so I'll just select the Windows and that's it. And now, obviously, make sure you so, uh, focus on the JDK. Uh, just download the MSI. Yep, next, next, I agree. Okay, yeah, that kind of a thing. And just get it done, get it done. While actually installing this, I found something interesting. Uh, when I was installing this, I found that this doesn't actually set any Android uh, path for me, not Android, the Java path for me. The path should be Java underscore home. If I zoom this a little bit. So notice here, it doesn't set it up for me. I simply went into the dropdown, said, hey, install it for me. It did it for me, but I was not sure. So I went into the checking mode. You should also be doing the same. So 
First of all, find out where it installed the things. And when you were just quickly pressing next, next, I agree, it actually said, hey, this is where I'm exactly installing it. So I actually checked it out. So now simply go ahead and move on to the C drive. And then in the program files, you will find that there is a folder in my case known as open logic. Yeah, that's the case. A lot of people try to find directly the JDK here, couldn't find it, then complaints. No, nope, you shouldn't be doing that. Go into open logic, then here's the uh, path that you should be looking up for. So once you go inside this, this is exactly the path you are looking up for. Just copy paste, copy it, and then simply go into your edit environment variables. ENV for edit system environment variables. Just click for it and then click on environment variables and then this is the java underscore home where it should be pasted. So I have pasted it for users because there is just one user for this. But I've also pasted it for system level so that I don't face any issue. There is java underscore home. Not only that, I've also pasted it in the path as well. If I just go ahead and click on edit, you'll see the very uh, version up here. Probably not here. And uh, probably not here. But in this, I'm 100% sure I've pasted it. So just, yeah. So if it is in system level, usually it's available to all users. So if I go ahead and click on edit, there we go, the first one. So this is, and make sure there is a slash bin. Don't just put it slash bin like this. Go into the bin directory and then copy paste. That's usually uh, the safe bet. So go into the bin and I'll just go in a minute. There we go. And I can just copy this one and I pasted this everywhere. So make sure you are also doing exactly same. All right. So this is okay. This is okay. And this is okay. We'll come back here in a minute. What this allows me to actually check whether Java is installed on my system or not. I can just say Java-V and it gives me a uh, Java-Version, I guess. Yeah, Java-Version. Sometimes between the Node and JDK, I get confused. So it's, it's common. So as you can see, we have this Java runtime environment, open JDK. That is 100% important. Now, next step. Yes, I'll take you onto the Flutter web page as well, but these are all prerequisites. They are also mentioned on the Flutter page as well. So I'll come back onto this in a minute. All right, so now coming back on to the Android Studio. So as you can see in the Android Studio page, how I landed on this page. Yeah, that's interesting. So I just simply went up into uh, this Android search, Android Studio download, clicked up here, and uh, voila, I am on the Android page. All right, so once I'm into the Android page, just click up here. Now, why this is important? Uh, you can run all of your apps on your real device as well, but in order to run your apps on the real device also, you simply need to have the SDK tools available for you. If the SDK tools are available for you, then only you can connect your real device, in, invoke the developer options and start your apps. But for that, you cannot just go with the SDK tools. They are not perfectly compatible. You need to download Android Studio. Again, operating system basic 101. Just installing the things and keeping them into the file system doesn't really do anything to your system. Once you actually invoke that program, then it loads into your memory and then it uh, actually choke your system. Otherwise, it's just a system file. It's just playing out there. No problem at all. Now, once you have installed this, it's also some things that you really need to know. I'll just fire up my Android Studio. Get ready to hear some fans. That's, that's normal. That's normal. <laughs> okay. So once we have done this, it will take some time to have this Android Studio. And now we can simply go ahead and have a uh, click up here on the actions and then SDK uh, manager. This is the first thing. Notice where it is installing things, C colon users and blah, blah stuff, then app data, local Android SDK. This is the file system where I'll be taking you in a minute. But first important thing is install APK 34, whatever is the latest for you. I've also installed the 33. Whenever you are working with React Native, Flutter, wherever you are working, there, there are chances that the cutting edge version is not yet supported. Uh, so 33, 34 in my case is the cutting edge. So I've installed 33 also. In your case, go ahead and if you are on the 35 version, go ahead and install 34 also, common thing. All right, then comes to SDK tools. You definitely 100% need Android SDK build tools. You also need SDK platform tools. No exception, no compromise. You need them absolutely how. Then go ahead and optionally install Android Play licensing library as well and also install SDK command line tools and emulator as well. Like all the check marks I've done, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, you, you need to check them. At least these are minimums. After that, if you install Google Play services like version 49, that's good, USB driver, that's up to you, that's up to you. The more the better, <laughs> all right. Now let's see where this actually, uh, all these files are there because you will need them. C, users, 
computer name, then app data. Let's go ahead and see if we can actually find this. I'll just close this one. We don't need it much now. I will need it a little bit later. So let's go up here and let's go into C drive. We said users, all right. And in the computer name, okay, I get there. And then, hey, where is my app data? Uh, app data doesn't, is not available here. Even the dot files are available, but this is not. That's where the Windows tries to be a little bit smart to you. It doesn't allow you to do that. So go ahead, put up a forward slash and then simply say app data, just like this, forward slash, voila, you are into it. That's exactly how you access it. Uh, simply click on local, then you can go into Android, then inside the SDK, this is where your SDK reside, but there are a lot of other things like emulator, go inside emulator, uh, and inside the emulator, you'll find a lot of tools up here as well. So if I go ahead and click on emulator, uh, there is uh, ADB and emulators and whatnot. Uh, also, you will see some platform tools, platforms, so everything is available here. Now, how many variables you need to set? Yeah, that's the big question. I'll show you that. Uh, feel free to take a screenshot. So I'll just say environment variable, ENV for short. Look for environment variables, click on environment variables. And first and foremost, important one, cannot skip this one, is Android underscore home, all caps. Yep, that's how it works. So go ahead and provide your Android SDK location here. Then go into, uh, again, your system variable as well. I have set it up for both places. Now, after this, uh, you also need a couple of variables in the path as well, and both of them. And again, if you set all the path in both the places, that is always ideal. I'll also do that in a minute, but hey, this is what we have. If I click on edit, notice here, the two compulsory one that I've used is SDK and platform tools as well, but these are not enough to run Flutter application. I'll show you that we'll install the Flutter path as well, but that's coming up, uh, have patience. And here also there is a path for user. Just click on edit and notice here how many we have. Yep, SDK, platform tools, emulator, tools, tools bin. Yep, all of them you need to set. Uh, don't copy paste from here, go into your folders and copy paste it from there, that's better. All right, after this much of installation and a whole bunch of drama, now we are ready to go on to Flutter install search because you are set up already now. Go up here, now we are on Windows, obviously, so we'll just open up Windows. And it says, hey, get the Flutter SDK. Just download it up here, and I have already downloaded it. And now I can see the Flutter is just placed on my desktop. Feel free to place it in your dev folder, where you like, not in the C drive directly, maybe in some folder inside the C drive. They also mentioned this, so I just kept it on the desktop. That's usually good for me. Uh, notice here, they also say that, hey, extract the file in some folders, like C source and Flutter. Uh, not directly like C program file something where, that's bad idea, so yeah. Then update your path, they also focus enough of emphasis on the path, so yeah, you should be doing that. All I did in this case was simply go ahead and uh, copy this flutter, and then there is a bin, so go inside that and simply click up here, you get the entire path. Again, same steps, I think you are bored now. Environment variables, click up here environment variables and inside the path if I go ahead and click on edit I didn't set it up here I set it up here in the process in the system variable but again wherever you set it you need to set it setting it in both is usually the best case so notice here the flutter bin system variables is if it's available in system it's available to all users as well by the way so we have got this path now uh, one more important thing once you have done all of this make sure you actually reload your command prompt. If you don't know how to source it up, then just close it, start it again, it source it up. In case you don't know what source mean, that's fine. That's fine, <laughs> just kidding with you. All right, so simply go up here. Now, once you have this path, now you'll be able to run the command like flutter aware flutter dart, and I'll be also able to run this in theory at least. So I can simply say, hey, where, and simply flutter. Uh, so it will give me, hey, here's your flutter, or you can ask for dart as well, because it actually gives you dart as well. So it says, hey, dart is also available. Now, once you have this, then you can actually go ahead and simply start uh, other commands. Android setup, we have already done. Yeah, this much of the installation we have set up. Then it says uh, flutter doctor Android licenses. So you can just copy this. This is usually to accept the licenses. So all you have to do is just say yes, yes, yes. That's all you have to do. And I'll just shrink this up a tiny bit. Come on, there we go. Ah, nice. So I'll just paste this. There we go. And uh, you can also write this in case you don't know how to paste it. Uh, Flutter Doctor Android licenses, and it will just check for Flutter how it works and all of that. Okay, so probably going to take some time. 
And there we go. All licenses are accepted with my case because I just did it. Then it comes to set up an editor that how you can set up in the VS code. Install the Flutter and Dart plugin. Then we can simply from the command palette, we can start a new app. So what I'll do is I'll just minimize this. I'll open up this app folder. And here we can simply go ahead and uh, create a new application. So I'll just open up my VS code. So I'll just say VS code. And what we're going to do is drag and drop this. We don't want this React Native app. We'll just drag and drop this one here. All right. Yes, I trust the author. Yes, of course. No problem there. I'll just maximize it. Oh, come on. Looks like sometimes Windows gives me tough time. All right, now all I have to do is uh, Control Shift P to actually get your command prompt. And all you have to run is simply Flutter, but make sure you install the extensions of it. Uh, so I'll just search for install extensions. So Flutter is installed, Dart is installed. Just search for them. Just search for them. There is no big deal. And then you can simply go ahead and say Control Shift P and simply run for Flutter, new project. Yep, this is the new project. Application, application empty, uh, plugin, whatever you want to build. There's a lot of things now you can build with uh, Flutter. So I'll just select the application. And this is the folder. I'll, I'll actually create a new folder. Uh, I'll just click on the new folder. And I'll say that uh, this one is HC Flutter 1. Yep. So I'll just say select this folder to create the application. I'll just name it a Flutter application 1. Yep, sounds good to me. And this will take just a couple of seconds. And there we go. And there we go. It's all up and running. So your Flutter app is here. Now, all you have to do is simply just say, hey, I want to run it. So you can just play it just like this. Or uh, there are a couple of options of how you can run it. And we can just check them up. All right. We are not here to actually run the app. Test drive, write your first app. Probably that's where they're. So we don't want this one. We want to run our own app. Test drive. And that says enter the project name, my app, run the app. So we can, so bottom blue bar, device, flutter. So it will detect a device as well. You can start the emulator. This is for, I guess, for the Mac guys. But yeah, this is all. So all right, as you see that this is how your project is up and running. And I can just press the F5 to start it. So your Flutter project is ready. By the way, there's a bar here which runs this as well. So I'll just say F5. So yep, that should be it. Run and debug. So that should be launching it up. Uh, by the way, my Android emulator is not up and running. So I should be actually starting it first. That would be better. <laughs> all right, so let me just start this. It should be faster because I just opened it up. Yeah, I was recording another video. So there we go. And I'll just press the home button. Yeah. All right, good enough. It should be checking it up for in a minute. So it's saying building a Windows application. We should be actually stopping it out because we want to now run it. Yep, run and debug. We want to run it for Android. OK, now it's saying Gradle task assembly beginning SDK. So now it is automatically detecting. Uh, by the way, you can run the command Flutter Doctor to see whether what devices are available for you to run. And that's exactly what we are here for. Let's just wait for a couple of seconds till it runs the Flutter app. A few moments later. All right, I can see the logo popping up. <laughs> now it's getting a little faster. Uh, yeah, the, both the apps, uh, wherever you're running it, it takes first a uh, few minutes to actually run it. And now I can just press it and it should be working. So there we go. Now it's working all good and fine. So this was your proper installation of how you can uh, build, run your very first Hello World application on a Windows system. I hope you have enjoyed this video. This takes a lot of effort. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so that we can bring in more videos for you. Uh, that's all for this video. And let's catch up in the next one. Hit that subscribe too.